Okay, so today's video is going to focus on viral reproduction. And if y'all remember from the last one, we did we did talk a little bit about this. And we talked about it in the sense that uh, viruses are able to reproduce, but they are only able to reproduce with the, host with the help of a host cell. Remember in the last video, we talked a little bit about viruses compared to cells. Okay, so as a little bit of kind of backup on that, let's talk about a virus for a second. Okay, remember, a virus only consists of a capsid. Remember, in some kind of genetic material, it can be a DNA or it can be RNA. Remember, the virus is not picky. It can be one or the other. And then remember, a virus may have an envelope and it may have some surface markers. Your cells, no matter what kind they are, prokaryotic or eukaryotic, they have to have some DNA. They have to have a cell membrane. They have to have a cyto they have to have cytoplasm. And they have to have ribosomes. And then remember, if it's a eukaryotic cell, plant, animal, fungus, it's going to have all those membrane-bound organelles. Okay, so your eukaryotic cells will have your membrane-bound organelles. Your mitochondria, your um, lysosomes, vesicles, vacuoles, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so looking at this host cell here, okay, uh, this particular host cell is a eukaryotic cell. As hopefully you can see, it's got a nucle it's got a nucleus, it's got endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? And so this host cell is required for the virus to reproduce. Basically what's ha going to happen is this virus that's coming in, so you can see your green virus here, this virus is basically going to come into the cell and use the cell's machinery to make more viruses. Okay? And the virus contains genetic material, and so remember genetic material would code for proteins. And remember the capsid is made of proteins. But you'll notice the virus has nothing to make the proteins with, right? Remember we make proteins with ribosomes and the virus doesn't have any. So basically what will happen is the virus is going to use the cell's ribosomes to be able to make its proteins. So it'll use the cell's uh, enzymes to be able to copy its genetic material and it'll use its cell's ribosomes to be able to make more proteins for the capsid. And you're going to end up with a whole bunch of new little viruses that can go off and do this to another host cell. Okay, so the virus can be in essentially two cycles during reproduction. It can be either what's called the lytic or the lysogenic phase of reproduction. Okay, and so in the lytic cycle, it is actively reproducing. Okay, it is actively spitting out new viruses from the host cell. Okay, in the lysogenic cycle, the virus is actually dormant. Okay, it is not actively reproducing. It is not assembling uh, viruses. There are kind of five basic steps to these cycles of reproduction for the virus. Okay, the first one being attachment, which both are required. Okay, both in the lytic and lysogenic cycle, the virus has to attach to the host cell. Okay, and then the second would be entry, which again would be required for both of them. Okay, there has to be, um, the genetic material has to get into the host cell. And then, um, then you get into replication of the genetic material, which every time the host cell reproduces during the lysogenic cycle, the viral D, um, DNA or RNA is being replicated, okay, but it is not making capsids. During replication for the lytic cycle, you're replicating the genetic material and making capsids. And then you've got the assembly of that capsid and the genetic material, putting it all together into a, a quote-unquote mature virus. That's only happening over in the lytic cycle, as well as the actual release of these new virus, which again is only happening during the lytic cycle. So let's kind of look at each one of these stages individually. Okay, so hopefully you remember how a virus is going to attach from when we talked about viral structure. Remember, viruses are um, cell-specific. Remember, viruses can't just infect any cell they come across. Okay? They have to have surface markers that match up. A okay? surface marker, surface receptors on the host cell. So you can see here, this virus is um, binding with a host cell. Remember, uh, here I've got my virus that has triangular-shaped receptors. So it would be able to bind with this host cell. So the markers or the surface receptors, they are what make the virus cell specific. Like we mentioned on the last video, we talked about like a cold virus. You know, a cold virus affects your respiratory passageways, but does not affect the cells in your stomach because the surface markers don't match up.
Okay, so once the virus has attached to the host cell, it has to insert the genetic material into the host cell. And remember, this is, um, if y'all remember from your vocabulary, this one here, this virus here is a bacteriophage. And if y'all remember, a bacteriophage is a virus that infects a bacterial cell. So remember, viruses don't just infect us. So this is your bacterial cell. This is your virus here. Okay, so here's my virus. It has attached to the bacterial cell. And now the viral DNA, okay, or the viral RNA, whatever genetic material it is, has entered into the host cell. And once that genetic material enters into the host cell, it is actually going to become part of the host cell's genome. So if I had a bacterial cell, okay, and it had its DNA here, okay, and then the virus has inserted its own DNA inside, okay, what you'll end up with is the viral DNA becoming part of that bacterial DNA. And so it's just entwined in there, kind of like when we talked about recombinant DNA. And so now, any time that bacteria copies its DNA, the viral DNA is going to get copied as well because it's in there. Okay, and the and the bacteria may not, you know, does not necessarily realize that that DNA does not belong to it. Now, if the conditions favor the virus, you know, if this is the cell is in a weakened state for some reason, uh, whatever it is, if the conditions favor the virus's um, quote unquote survival, okay, the virus will then begin to replicate and assemble itself in here. So you can see the virus here replicating. Okay, so I've got the DNA replicating, it's making capsids. Okay, and so then it will start to assemble itself. And so it can assemble itself into okay, little viruses. And so eventually, the cell, the new viruses are going to fill up the host cell. And when they fill up the host cell, they're going to need to get out. Now that these viruses have assembled and filled up the host cell, they need to be released. And you'll notice as they release, they break the cell membrane of the host cell. So this ends up killing the host cell. And that's what makes us sick. That's what makes us have symptoms. That's what makes us sick is when these viruses are killing the host cell. They're killing our cells. Okay, so this is our lytic cycle. Remember, lytic, lysis, means to burst or to kill, to explode. Okay, so I've got my virus attachment here in the entry of the viral genetic material. Okay, the viral genetic material will um, usually combine with the bacterial genetic material or the host cell genetic material and it will be replicated. And so as the virus is, as its genetic material is being replicated, its genetic material codes for these proteins to make the capsids. So it um, hijacks, essentially hijacks the machinery of its host cell. It assembles capsids, okay, and then it will put the genetic material into the capsid to assemble full mature viruses. And now those viruses will burst out of the host cell and go infect other cells. And so now the host cell has died due to this lytic cycle. So if the environment is not favorable for viral reproduction, then we have happened what's called the lysogenic cycle. Okay? And so the lysogenic cycle is happening when the virus is um, dormant. The host may not even realize that they have the virus during the lysogenic cycle. Okay? And the virus is not actively reproducing. So in this diagram here, you can see both lytic and lysogenic cycle because what happens with the virus is event the virus will eventually come out of this lysogenic cycle. So here's the lysogenic portion over here. Here's the lytic portion over here. Okay, and so the virus, like I said, will usually come out of the lysogenic cycle. Maybe um, the host cell is under some kind of stress and the virus sees an opportunity or a weakness. Okay. But when the virus is over in this lysogenic phase, it is not actively um, dividing. It is not making the host cell sick. It is considered dormant, or um, it is sometimes also called late. Somebody may have a late virus. Uh, somebody that has this virus that is not getting, uh, not getting sick, uh, they could be called a carrier. 
just like we'd had our alleles and we were heterozygous and we were carriers, okay, you could pass it on, but you did not necessarily express the trait. This is the same situation. They could pass this virus on, but they're not actually sick. Okay, so we first, we mentioned here, okay, so here's the virus has to attach and the viral DNA has to enter the cell. Okay, and, and when it goes into the lysogenic phase, it incorporates itself into the bacterial or host cell DNA. In this case, it's a bacterial cell. And so every time this bacteria divides, it has to copy its DNA. And when it copies its DNA, it copies that piece of viral genetic material. And so every new bacteria, every time it divides, every new bacteria contains the viral genetic material in it. So when conditions become favorable to the virus, and you'll notice it's circling back around here, when conditions become favorable to the virus, it'll flip over here to the lytic cycle. And now it will kill the host cell. Okay, now it is actively replicating and assembling itself and will end up killing the host cell. Okay, so these are things like, um, if you think about uh, chicken pox, a lot of you, if uh, a lot of you have probably not had chicken pox, but you've heard of it, okay? and a lot of you have probably heard of shingles. Okay? It's a there's a lot of commercials out now about how you should get a shingles shot. Okay, shingles is due to virus, and it is you cannot get shingles if you did not have the chicken pox disease, not get a vaccine, but actually have the disease. When you get the chicken pox disease, it's a virus. And once your body handles it the first time, it doesn't completely wipe out that virus. That virus becomes dormant and goes through the lysogenic cycle. And if there is a reason that your body sees an opportunity, that virus sees an opportunity, your body is weak or stressed for whatever reason, it can flare up many, many years later as shingles. Okay, so that would be an example of a virus going into the lysogenic phase. Okay, so this is viral, you know, this is how a virus is going to reproduce. It's how it'll make us sick. So um, next video, we'll be talking a little bit more about uh, infections and how we spread viral diseases.